welcome to this uh, lecture 25 in groundwater hydrology. In this lecture, we will be covering this groundwater salinity and samples followed by graphical representations of groundwater. So, now let us uh, discuss this, let us start with this groundwater salinity. See almost all groundwaters all groundwater contains salts and hence has salinity. And this salin, this uh, salt content varies from so this is uh, less than twenty five mg per liter to forty thousand. So this is uh, in quartzite spring in quartzite springs. to 40,000 mg per liter in uh, brines or which are uh, there is a strong solutions of uh, salt common salt or here. So, this salinity this uh, this type and concentration salts varies with environment then uh, movement that is the movement of salt as well as source from where these salts originate. So, the generally salt concentration in ground water. So, this ground water G w is abbreviation for ground water is much greater than salt concentration in surface water. So, the reason is obvious because in case of ground water the the flow velocity is much less reason is greater exposure to soluble materials in uh, geological strata. Whereas, in case of surface water it may not happen and therefore, especially when the surface is uh, almost impervious. So, in that case, so there will not be any exposure to soluble materials and therefore, the, uh, the salt concentration will be much less and here. So, the, the soluble salts in ground water soluble salts in ground water. So, they originate from
primarily from rock material solutions and uh, here so among the anions so the most common anions are uh, bicarbonates so this is derived from from co2 that is uh, released by organic decomposition On the other hand, the salinity also varies so this is the the primary anion anions are hco3 in ground water primary anions in uh, ground water are hco3 and salinity also varies with this uh, surface area of aquifer comma solubility of minerals or mineral solubility and uh, obviously this uh, contact time so each one of them if uh, when they are more so then obviously the salinity also increases and uh, so the salinity is the highest when the ground water movement is the least is the slowest and generally so therefore generally salinity so it increases with uh, say depth because as we go down so the the ground water movement slows down and hence the salinity increases so this uh, common uh, this one is the say suppose this is the ground so this is the ground level and then so this is a uh, shallow depths so this is the and then so this is the so deeper depths so at the shallow depths so there will be bicarbonate salinity or say hco3 waters ground water and at deeper depth and at the deepest depths so here this is a chloride ground water so in between the remaining uh, salts filled so now let us go on to the let us discuss other factor say for example this uh, precipitation this uh, 
the precipitation which falls on ground so contains small amounts of uh, dissolved minerals so once this precipitation reaches ground as precipitation reaches ground so it reacts with soil minerals and rocks and here so the type of mineral dissolved depends on that is the chemical composition chemical composition of rock physical structure of rock and also it depends upon the ph and the the redox potential so these are the four factors which decide the type of mineral dissolved in ground in uh, ground water and here so this carbon dioxide in solution so this is a uh, assists in solvent action and also solvent action of water and results in in the the downward movement of ground water so in uh, areas with large ground water recharge say for example in alluvial alluvial streams comma channels artificial recharge areas so in these areas so the the quality of infiltrating ground water infiltrating surface water so this largely influences ground water quality
and here so this uh, locally absorbed gases from gases originating from magma contribute dissolved mineral minerals to ground water. So, this uh, conate conate water that is soluble compounds of uh, marine sediments that is water with soluble compounds of marine sediments has a high high mineral content because it is uh, derived from water entrapped in sedimentary strata. Now, let us briefly discuss the the geochemical cycle of uh, surface water. and ground water. So, this is taken from the source so the USGS water supply paper. Fourteen sixty nine. Here, this case. So this is uh, there is a uh, evaporation, and this evaporation. So, and here there is condensation. and of course, so here there is atmosphere and uh, while condensation. So, here in this so here it gets uh, nitrogen oxygen 
N2 O2 CO2. So, these are uh, dissolved then so here there will be precipitation and from precipitation so a small component will go into atmosphere and uh, part of it will move and major part of it will move uh, downwards and here in this precipitation so, this precipitation gets added with so this is a retention in mountains. So, here this is a, it gets added with CO2 dissolved in soil. then C A calcium, sodium, magnesium bicarbonates and then it also gets added with uh, sulphates. And it also this uh, this conate water. So, all these things and then it results. Uh, so, eventually it is uh, moving as runoff and this part of runoff So, here this is uh, evaporation and again after evaporation it goes into atmosphere and then. So, here part of this uh, runoff also goes into what is called the soil water so this is a and again in this soil water so this is co2 will get added then soil minerals then uh, carbonic acids that is H 2 CO 3 then colloidal F E A L silica S I O 2 etcetera and uh, again say from this it goes through the so the soil water is absorbed by the plants and uh, here so this is transpiration And again say from transpiration it goes into 
so this atmosphere and here so these are the plants and a part of it so here this is the so this uh, so after this evaporation so what are left are the chlorides sulfates of uh, na sodium magnesium calcium so they also get carried and here so this uh, so here you have the runoff so this is a and from this runoff you have this to soil water and again so this is uh, here you have the precipitation and uh, and so this part of runoff so this goes to this uh, ocean outflow and this is here there is a ocean and uh, so this part of runoff so this is uh, goes to ground water so here this is soil water already you have discussed this soil water and below this soil water we have this uh, ground water and from ground water also there is a so this is the effluent seepage which goes to this uh, ocean outflow and of course there will also be so subsurface outflow to oceans and uh, this is so this is the ground water and again so this uh, the soil water as well as ground water both are absorbed by plants and uh, so from this plants so this transpiration and again so it goes to so this uh, atmosphere and of course uh, from this uh, soil water also so part of it uh, so this is uh, evaporation so so from precipitation also so it, there will be some evaporation and uh, so here you have this uh, atmosphere
and so here you have the atmosphere. So, this is the the geochemical cycle of uh, surface water and ground water. So, now so this uh, the salts added to the ground water. salts are added to ground water by soil weathering and also by rainfall erosion. So, this excess irrigation water contributes substantial uh, salts, substantial amounts of salts. So, the moreover the soluble salt materials this I am sorry soluble soil materials comma fertilizers comma this uh, selective salt absorption absorption from plants alters the the salt concentration the salt concentration in the percolating waters so we may find high salinity in soils and ground water of arid regions where rain water leaching is uh, not effective. So, similarly in poorly drained areas there will be high salt content. So, 
So, these poorly drained areas, so they are generally referred to as uh, bad lands. So, because of uh, poor drainage with uh, low agricultural productivity. So, this is how the, the salinity in soils varies. Now, we will discuss about the samplings. So, the ground water samplings. And uh, here, so in the groundwater sampling, so this is for uh, quality analysis. So generally, the samples. are taken in uh, Pyrex glass bottles or this polythene bottles. In uh, say 1 to 2 liters that is sufficient for normal routine analysis. So, this uh, samples need to be stored in cool places for uh, laboratory analysis for prompt lab analysis and uh, samples need to be taken only after after uh, ground water pumping for some time. So, with each sample, records related to well location, sample depth, casing size then date sampling date water temperature comma odor color turbidity say other operating conditions need to be taken down need to be noted down.
So, for uh, organic and radiological constituents, special sampling and storage techniques are required. storage techniques specific to the ground water uh, pollutants need to be employed. So, if the the time gap between sampling and analysis is short, the analysis is more reliable. So, this uh, this temperature analysis related to this temperature p h alkalinity and uh, dissolved gases so is uh, done in the field itself So, cations like uh, Fe plus 2 comma plus 3 ferrous ferric Cu then aluminum manganese chromium zinc are subject to loss by adsorption. samples taken from wells penetrating stratified aquifers may yield different results. Different solute con solute concentrations so in such case
So it is it should be possible to obtain water samples of uh, ground water meeting certain criteria certain quality criteria on the other hand samples in individual strata could be entirely could be totally unacceptable unacceptable because there is only a single strata and then so it uh, may not be representative so now we'll go to the graphic representation of uh, ground water quality so here in this graphic representation so this can be through vertical bar graphs or it can all be also be through trilinear diagrams or it can be through radiating vector diagrams circular diagrams or semi logarithmic diagrams now let us briefly consider the vertical bar graphs for uh, ground water quality representation so these vertical bar graphs may have so these vertical bar graphs and uh, this is taken from hem in 1970 and here so this is the so 
So, this is the, so there will be a reference number and uh, in this So, here it could be So, this could be sodium and uh, this could be magnesium so this could be calcium and uh, likewise so this could be sulfate so this could be carbonate and bicarbonate and uh, so this could be chloride and nitrate like that so here so there will be multiple uh, this vertical bar charts each showing the concentration of different uh, components and then so on each one of them so there will be a reference number so next we'll so we'll go to this uh, trilinear diagrams so this trilinear diagrams essentially So, here there will be three triangles. So, the left triangle will have the cation concentration. So, this is N A plus K and uh, here this will be C A and the right side this one will have anion concentration and uh, here we have the and in between there will be a diamond shaped diagram which will have which is a combination of both this left triangle and then right triangle so this is SO4 plus Cl sulfate plus chloride and here this is calcium plus magnesium and uh, so this is the sodium and this one and uh, so like that so this is a trilinear diagram and so this is taken from this uh, again from the same source that is hem in 1970 and uh, next it is the radiating vector diagrams So, in case of this radiating vector diagrams, there will be the radiating vectors whose length represent so 
So, this is uh, vector length representing concentration. So, in this case, so there are uh, say this is n a m g n a plus k m g then h c o 3. So, we will uh, continue this in the next class. Thank you.